This is video number three on the topic of sexual reproduction in plants and it's covering pollination and fertilization. So now you know the detailed structure of the flower, you also know how the pollen grain was formed and you also know how that embryo sac was produced and how it produced the egg cell and the polar nuclei. And the next stage now is the transfer of that pollen grain to the female part of the flower, the stigma of the carpal. So remember that you must know how to define pollination, the transfer of pollen from anther to stigma. If the transfer of pollen is from the anther to the stigma on the same flower or a flower on the same plant, this is called self-pollination. It's not ideal as it results in a less robust plant. When pollen gets transferred from the anther of one flower to the stigma of another flower on a different plant but of the same species, well this is known as cross-pollination and it's the more preferred method because it results in a more robust plant. Some flowers rely on the wind to carry the pollen, so they are wind pollinated. They are often feathery looking, they don't have bright coloured petals, the reproductive parts hang on the outside of these flowers and grass would be a good example of a wind pollinated plant. Some flowers depend on animals for pollination. These flowers are usually brightly coloured, have a nice perfume and the reproductive parts are found within the flower. So pollination has taken place and the pollen grain lands on the stigma. The pollen grain then absorbs water and begins to germinate. A pollen tube begins to grow out from that pollen grain and into the pollen tube enters those two nuclei, the tube nucleus and the generative nucleus. The pollen tube will continue to grow down through the style towards the ovule of the flower and it's growing controlled by that tube nucleus. Most of the time, the generative nucleus enters that pollen tube and it undergoes mitosis in the pollen tube to produce those sperm nuclei, those two haploid sperm nuclei. The pollen tube grows down through the carpal towards the ovule and it's controlled by that tube nucleus. Inside the pollen tube are those male gametes, those sperm nuclei, and remember they're both haploid. Eventually the pollen tube will make its way to the micropyle, which is the entrance to the ovule. It's here that the tube nucleus degenerates and so those sperm nuclei can enter the ovule. So now the first fertilization event can happen. Those sperm nuclei enter the embryo sac and the first fertilization event takes place. One of the sperm nuclei fuses with the female egg cell to produce a diploid zygote and this is going to become the embryo plant. The second sperm nuclei will fuse with those two polar nuclei to form this triploid three sets of chromosomes, this triploid endosperm, and this is going to provide nourishment for that developing embryo. So there were two fertilization events. Remember, we started off with this embryo sac and inside the embryo sac in the ovule was the female egg cell and those two polar nuclei. The first fertilization event was the fusion of the male gamete nucleus with that egg cell to form a diploid zygote. That becomes the embryo plant. The second fertilization event was the second male sperm gamete nucleus and it fuses with the polar nuclei to form this triploid 3N endosperm and this is going to be the food supply for that developing embryo plant. So that's the end of video number three on sexual reproduction in flowering plants. So you should be able to define pollination, distinguish between self and cross pollination, discuss the formation of the pollen tube and the role of that tube nucleus and also how those male gamete nuclei were formed by that generative nucleus undergoing mitosis in the pollen tube. Talk about the two fertilization events. So remember there was double fertilization. So best of luck with all of the revision. Be sure to use past papers and check the answers.